Hello. Hello, everybody. It's JD. I got a question to ask you all before I start on my video. I want you to think about this, and I'll get to the answer. Who actually voted Obama into office? Who actually put probably one of our most corrupt political machines into the White, White House? Who actually put probably one of the most extreme socialist presidents that we have ever had into the White House? A government that's telling you that you must serve the government instead of the government serving you. I mean, look at what they did to the family of the reporter who was beheaded. They actually threatened them if they wished to buy their son freedom. Where does the government get the audacity to tell an American citizen that? Do you think a real rich American would even be scared by that threat? They probably would have went to another foreign country, negotiated their son's release, or daughter's release, and got the release. And the federal government would not have said a single thing. Just because the federal government's policy is not to pay ransom does not make that the policy of everybody in this country what the individual does with their family is supposed to be protected not dictated by the federal government who put that authority into the white house Whistleblowers are supposed to be protected. But we have several whistleblowers, one of them especially living in Russia, who's declared a traitor. He whistle blew on something the federal government was doing. And the White House made him a traitor. Who put that type of people into the White House? Who elected the people who have no concept of what serving the people is all about. But you must serve them. Who placed those? Think about it for a few minutes. I'm trying to give you an alternative to where you will have someone to choose that believes us, the people, can fix these problems, and we can. Not me, myself, and I alone, but us together, we, the people, can fix these very problems that we're having. And that the federal government is to serve the American people and to keep the promises made to each and every one of you, giving you a choice. But I want you to think about this for a few minutes. Who actually put Obama in the White House. I'll start off with the obvious answer. The Democrats. No. Because the Democrats alone could not cast enough votes if this other group voted otherwise. Well, then, if it wasn't the Democrats, was it the inability of the Republicans to get enough votes? No, because even if all the Republicans voted, they still couldn't outnumber this other group. The other political parties combined? No, they're not even close. Then who actually Put. Who elected Obama into the White House?
You can turn around and look at each other. I'll give you an example of what some of them would say. My vote don't count. My vote really don't matter. My vote disappears. So why should I vote? This is what they say from that one group. Obama was not elected by the Democrat Party. Obama was actually elected by each and every American who did not vote. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Only 40-some percent of the people, about 46% of the people don't vote. Right. About 46% of the people don't vote. About 60, almost 60% of the people, 50-some percent of the people did vote. But when you divided those votes among the Republican Party and the Democrat Party and the Libertarian Party and the Greenpeace Party, whoa. Does any of them add up to 40-some percent? No. They'd be lucky if they got 35% of the vote. But what is this 46%? It's you who don't vote. If all of you who did not vote, vote for somebody else, other than Mick Romney or Obama, or Ron Paul, or the Greenpeace candidate, if all 46% of you voted for somebody else, that individual would win in every single state. That individual would have all the electoral delegates. But you didn't vote. And you helped elect the winner by not voting. You actually, by not casting a ballot, not taking the time to vote for a worthy candidate, allowed what we got now. That's true. You can argue the point all you want, you people out there. Argue it every single day. Just argue it all you want. But the truth is, you who do not vote elected Obama the first time and the second time. If you people who did not vote, for example, all, all of you, wrote me in in 2008, J.D., that's what I told them to write, just J.D., would have won the presidential election. Said you don't have to write James Dennis Cravo. Cravo is a hard name to spell. You don't even have to write J.D. Cravo. Just write J.D. That's what I told you to write. And almost 9 million did. But if all of you who did not vote wrote J.D., J.D. would have won the election instead of Obama the first time. And we wouldn't be having the problems we're having now. But you decided, hey, my vote don't count. My vote don't matter. My vote really means nothing. And believe me, people, the political machine wants you to believe that. The political machine wants you not to vote. <clears throat> Do you think after the political parties conventions, their advertisements on TV that continues to go on for the Republican Party and Democrat Party is to get the Republicans and Democrat votes? No. Because you see, most of the Democrats and most of the Republicans will vote for their party's candidate no matter what. They don't even know what they stand for. They don't even know what they're about. But they're going to vote Republican and they're going to vote Democrat. But they still do not, either one of them, exceed the number of you people who do not vote. 
then what's this advertising they do? They could actually quit the advertising after the national convention. It's to get the independents and the non-voters to vote for them. Because those are the people who decide. The non-voters by not voting, and the independents by choosing one or the other. So the independents and the non-voters elected the president each and every time. So when you say your vote don't count, that there's nobody to worth worth voting for, and you don't vote, you just voted for whoever won the election. Boy, did your vote count. Counted a lot. Because they were counting on you not voting. That's why I say to each and every one of you, I need your votes. I am giving you somebody to vote for. I'm giving you somebody who knows what leadership is, who knows the responsibility of leadership, who makes only one promise to you to bring your voice to Washington, D.C., and that the government will serve you, the people, vice you serve the government, who believes in the Constitution and the Constitution shall follow, and be the supreme law, will not be interpreted by some lawyer, but as it is written, who believes that your rights have to be protected, your privileges have to be enforced, and the promise that the Constitution makes to you must be kept. Now some people argue that the Constitution doesn't make a promise, but it does. In the preamble, the reason for the Constitution, that's the promise. Then we have the Declaration of Independence, why we declared ourselves a sovereign nation from England. That is part of our heritage. That must be maintained. And each and every American citizen's rights must be protected from the time they're born to the time they die. And the federal government is to ensure that it is protected. And yes, we are a Christian nation. Though separation of church and state shall be maintained. The Supreme Court has no right or authority to tell you where and when you can pray. Because that's interfering with the free exercise of it. Actually, the Supreme Court cannot even tell anybody but the federal courts where or when they could post the Ten Commandments. The Supreme Court cannot order a marriage. That is a religious ceremony. The Supreme Court can issue a union of two people. Say each and every state will issue no matter what gender between two people, a union. The justice of the peace can legalize that union. Or a church, through marriage, can legalize that union. But only a church, a minister, a rabbi, a priest. Those people, preacher, they can only legalize a union through marriage. The justice of the peace, if it's not a minister, not a preacher, not a priest, not a rabbi, can only legalize the union. But under either case, it gives equal rights as a union to same sex or head of sex. But a union will be between two people. We try to change this with all the laws that they try to do. Before you know it, we're going to have the Muslims, the Mormons saying, hey, wait a minute. If 
they can't say no in marriages to the same sex, then how can they say no to marriages of multiple people? See, the Mormon religion believes in multiple wives. The Muslim religion believes in multiple wives. That would be the free exercise of the religion. But you see, the federal government could say, we will only recognize a union between two people and only two people. That has nothing to do with marriage. That has to do with the political aspect. And the two people can be of the same sex or different sex. The justice of the peace legalizes the union. Or, like I said, preachers, ministers, rabbis, priests, bishops, anybody else that is a religious leader can also legalize a union via marriage. And whether they choose to do it between people of different genders or the same gender is that religious organization's choice, not the federal government's. So there's a separation of church and state, but we as Christians must be examples for those who come behind us. The best way to show you what I mean by example is when you stand there and you tell someone, you're going to hell, you're dictating. No, that is not a Christian way. You're going to hell if you don't receive the word of Christ. That's dictating. That is not a Christian way. Follow me and with the grace of God and the word of Christ I shall lead you to the place our Father created for us. That is the Christian way. The example. Well, that's the way I live my life, people. Politically, I feel the government should serve the people. Not the people serve the government. I believe we are a Christian nation and we shall always be a Christian nation even if we must stand alone in this world. I do my very best. I trust in God. I believe we, you and me, together can fix this nation. I can't do it. Me, myself, and I alone cannot do it. And anybody who tells you they can do it, they can fix the problems in Washington. Well, if you want me to say that, I would say first, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Then if you want me to say I can do it, I'll tell you I do it. And what did I tell you when I say, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies? Whatever follows after that, if you insist, is a bold-faced lie. And know it. Up front. So the truth is, no, I can't. But us together, we can. We can fix it. I'm going to help bring your voice to Washington, D.C. I'm going to drag you with me to Washington, D.C. And the one thing I want to do at the end of my term, whether it's one or two, is to tell you, the people, I have placed the federal government back in the hands of you, the people. Don't ever let any entity, whether it's a political party, a lobbyist, a corporate, uh, corporate, uh, corporate corporation, a rich group of uh, bankers, uh, organization of the world, New World Order, or any of that, steal it from you again. Because I will place it in your hands. That's my goal. Now, dealing with the world problems and dealing with leading the country, I shall provide the guidance needed and accept the full responsibility of what my guidance is. The day I'm sworn in, I don't want to hear what Obama did because it's no longer their responsibility. It will be my responsibility 
So I don't want to know what Obama did. I don't want to know what they before me did. I do want to know what we're going to do. And I want you to tell me what you want. Some of the things, I mean, you may tell me something and you may say, well, he's not listening to me. I am listening to you. But the majority of people are actually saying something else. I will listen to each and every one, but I will follow the majority. Like for now, the majority feels we need to do something about ISIL. Then we need to do something about ISIL. Or are we going to continue allowing Americans to be beheaded? That's the choice we have. Do I believe in peace? Strongly, I believe in peace. But I do not believe in peace at all costs. Peace at all costs is nothing more, more than a fancy way of saying slavery. You do what I want, how I want it, when I want it, whether you like it or not, and that's the way you do it. That's peace at all costs. By you doing everything I tell you to do and get nothing in return, you have established peace by not complaining and just doing it. When you get up and say no, you just stop establishing peace. But you establish your rights as an individual. And that is what I want from you. So people, this video is, I'm giving you something different to vote for. Different, not a change, different. I do not belong to any political party, so I need each and every one of you Americans out there. You people who don't vote, I need you all to get off your duff and now tell the world of JD and us, we the people. Tell them. We're coming. Let them know you are supporting JD. Tell your friends of JD. Let them look on YouTube, my channel, JD Cravo, and check me out. Right now, I'm saying don't vote for me. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying go out there and vote for me, vote for me, vote for me. No, I'm saying check me out. If you agree, then help. Get out there and do something. And together, we can fix our nation. But if you just sit there and listen and say, Yeah, I agree with this man. Yeah, this man says, makes a lot of common sense. Yes, this man does have the right ideas. And that's all you do. Well, you just voted for the other guy that you don't like. Remember, the old saying, you put junk in, you get junk out. You continue to support the political parties, expect it to be exactly the same as it's been for year after years after years. If you want to make it different, we're going to have to take a step backwards towards our forefathers and go forward from there. We can do it together. I can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. But we together you and I, the people of the United States of America, can. But we must work together. But you must get out there and start telling people of J.D. J.D. has to be a common word in every household. And above all else, each and every one of you must go out and cast your vote. Right now, I want you to help me to get on the ticket so that my name will appear in every single state, in every single town, in every single district. From the smallest community to the largest metropolitan. But to do that, we have to get started now. If you wait till 2016, it's too late. I'll be a write-in again, and there's no way to win. I might get 10 million votes this time. I might get 20 or 30 million, but it's not enough to win. I have to get at least 40% of the votes. Just think of all the people who did not vote, voted for J.D., I would have 40-some percent. We can't hide it. They can't hide it. 
political parties cannot hide a vote like that. And each and every one of your votes will count very dearly. So understand what I said. The people who actually elected Obama into office, actually really elected him, made him president, were the very people who did not vote. For if you would have voted for somebody else, that other person would have won. By you not voting, you allowed Obama to win. That's how important your vote is, and that's how much it actually really counts. Both the Democrat Party and the Republican Party are counting on you, the majority, 40 some percent, almost 50 percent of Americans not voting. Me, on the other hand, I'm counting on each and every American to get out there and vote. I am giving you something to vote for. It's up to you to do your job. And together, we can fix our nation. No, my foreign policy, each and every nation has a right to exist. We, United States of America, does not have the right to go into nations and set up governments. We need to back off, let the people of that nation choose how they shall govern, not us. And we need to quit interfering. The example of Cyrus, uh, ISIL right now with Syria, I would not be arming the rebels. I'd be trying to get the rebels and the Syrian government to sit down together so that we, the three of us, can fight this threat, ISIL. Because they're going to lose both the rebels and Syria if ISIL's not taken care of. More so than we, the United States. Even though they are a threat to us, which they are, they are an imminent threat to Syria and serious rebels. So people, this is how I look at the world. We, the United States, has too much to worry about within our boundaries to go around telling other people how they should live. We should let them decide within their nation how they wish to live and respect the people's choice. Am I right by thinking so or not? You decide. Listen to my videos. There's almost 700 of them now, 680 something. Listen to them. It tells you my policies. I had gone through different things and said stuff. And know that if you want me to lie to you, it will always begin with ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. And then the bold faced lie will follow. So, people. No, I alone cannot fix this nation. Us together, we can. You who do not vote, put Obama in office. You elected Obama more so than those who voted for him. That's how important your vote really is. By you not casting it, you automatically voted for the winner. Thank you, people. This is JD. Think about what I said. I'm not lying to you. I'm not telling you a story, and it's not make-believe. Listen to what I said, how I said it. Check out my videos on YouTube. You decide. And then if you agree with me, help me. Get my word passed out there. Our word, because that's what it will become. If you disagree, let's talk. Let me know why you disagree, and we'll talk about it, and we'll go from there. But I'll never turn you away, okay? Thank you for your time. This is JD. And remember, all you who did not vote help elect the current administration. And there's no other way around it. Have a nice day. This is JD.